In this video, we're going to uh, look over some tips on how to study for the test on statistical inference. Uh, this is the home page of uh, the website, the course website. Uh, go look at the left side under course materials, the handouts page, and then inside the handouts page, uh, exam prep. Here we are. Uh, the first thing you see under to prep for exams is the formulas and tables packet. That's what you're going to need to have during the test. Um, if it's an in-class exam, uh, then you'll be provided with it. Uh, or it depends on your teacher. Uh, if it's an online exam, you should make sure to print it out and take it along with you. You've got formulas, you've got tables, everything you need in order to take the test. Back to handouts. Okay. Now, under study sheets, you have some materials that were taken um, from the lecture notes. Uh, some, you might call them, you know, summaries, some, some good summaries uh, to look at, to review, make sure you know everything uh, for the exams. Uh, of course, if you've gone through the lectures carefully, you already know this and you probably don't need them. Let's look at the ones that might be relevant to the inference exam. Steps in hypothesis testing, of course. Um, inference overview, let's take a look at that one. Um, that's the kind of thing that uh, helps you, uh, not, not for all of inference, this isn't, uh, doesn't cover confidence interval estimation, but for hypothesis testing, um, we've learned a lot of different types of hypothesis tests, and um, they're all very, very similar, which is a good thing because once you learn one, you've learned all of them with minor differences, but um, you, you, you might need some kind of a guide to help you figure out when you read a problem, what kind of problem is it? And here's your guide. What's the parameter? We've learned mu and p, the population uh, proportion. What test statistic will you be using, z or t? Is it a one tail or a two tail test? And is it a one sample or a two sample test? Back here. Um, Hypothesis testing, when you work out a problem for homework, you want to make sure that nothing is missing. Here are all the different parts uh, of a hypothesis test that must be there. And this is, um, this is what I'm talking about. Here's an example. You, you have four parts. If you're missing any one of these parts, it's not a hypothesis test. You need the hypotheses, HO and H1. Without these, it's not a hypothesis test. Um, you need uh, to define the uh, parameters of the test. You want to know uh, when you're going to reject the null hypothesis and when, when not. So you need to choose the test statistic. In this case, it's Z. You need to find the critical values from the table. You need to set up the decision rule in the uh, unshaded area in the middle here. That's where we say, no, we can't reject the null hypothesis. It might be true. And in the shaded areas, in the, the two sides, the two tails in this case, um, that's the, re the region of rejection. Uh, and then the third part is what we get from the data, from the empirical data, the calculated value of the, the test statistic. And then finally, you need to come to a conclusion. You compare your calculated value of the test statistic with the critical values that you got in, in the second step. Um, and you either reject the null hypothesis or you don't reject the null hypothesis. But in, in any case, you need to have that final step. It's not a hypothesis test without each of these four steps being present. Um, again, this is something from the lectures to understand the difference between uh, substantiating a claim and refuting a claim. There's different um, um, paradigms in hypothesis testing. Um, here's something relatively new. If you've been following the course for a while, you may not have seen it. It was just put up last week. Um, it's a, a lecture that's a, a review session of certain problems uh, in uh, inference. And here you have it in narrated PowerPoint uh, form and as a YouTube video, uh, just like all the other lectures. 
and that that would be something very very uh, good for you to follow up on and this is a good point uh, to make at this point and, and uh, all throughout the semester the the best way to study for exams in this course is to do lots of problems 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 homework 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 find problems wherever you can go to problem solver books um, that that is the the only way that you're going to um, you can't just uh, study theoretically and say to yourself oh I know that and then when you come to the exam hope that you're going to get a hundred it's very easy to get a hundred it's very easy to get an A in this course but you do need lots and lots of practice problems so this review lecture gives you practice problems in inference and in addition, we have more practice problems right below it. Um, you can ignore the ones for the midterm and sampling distributions because that's done. We're, we're talking about the next test, uh, the inference test. And here you have um, two practice sets for inference problems. Let's take a quick look at it. Um, if you download this, you will, here we are. Um, you'll see all different kinds of problems uh, that you can work on. The more, the better. Here we are back again. Uh, this is an interesting one. Um, inference potpourri. Uh, one of the problems that a lot of students have is they do fine during when they do the lecture. They do the homework. Um, it's, uh, let's say, um, a one-tailed, one-sample t-test, and they get it all right, and they're great. The problem happens when you're at a test, and the test could uh, could have problems from any of the inference topics that we've studied, and there's at least four weeks of them. And um, uh, you want to practice doing problems where you don't know in advance what chapter or what topic it came from. So let's take a look at that. Um, make sure you read the first page uh, very carefully because uh, this is actually taken from a review for the final exam where there might be more problems uh, than you need. Um, and so you read this carefully and you only do the problems related to statistical inference. The, the, what, what we were talking about, mu versus p. Uh, Z versus T and so on. But the nice thing about this practice set is that the, the problems are all over the place. Um, and where are the solutions? Well, go back to the handouts. The solutions are right here. And you see, you get an idea of why um, it would be very difficult uh, for me to redo this and take out the, the, the irrelevant problems. One day I'll probably do it. Um, but I got to say that uh, I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, so these are the solutions, the uh, problems we had before. You saw them. Uh, what else we got? Um, anything that says practice for the final exam, of course, is going to include inference. Um, we'll, I, I might have a review, uh, you know, or pointers for studying correlation and regression separately but uh, this is supposed to be purely um, for the inference sections. Before I, uh, before I sign out, let's just go to the lectures, the overview of the lectures, so you have an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, when I say the inference exam, the inference exam would cover all these topics. There you go. Uh, starting from introduction to statistical inference, and there you go, uh, through all the two sample tests. Okay, I'm not including chi square uh, because uh, we don't always do it every semester. So if your teacher uh, did do the chi square distribution and you're responsible for it, then obviously you would want to include that. All right. I hope this was helpful. Uh, good luck uh, to everybody on your exams and on your progress uh, through your professional careers.